You know, a lot of people like to use sugar in their coffee nowadays as a sweetener, but our family has always enjoyed using honey, and we can't get over how good it tastes. Which brings us to our next episode of Analyzing the Natural Beekeeping Central Commandments. Let's break right into it. Good afternoon, beekeepers and bee enthusiasts. How you doing? It's another cold day at the farm, and we are just hanging out. Uh, we had so much fun recording that episode the other day of Analyzing the Natural Beekeeping Central Commandments that we are just so excited uh, to bring you another episode, and we know you're going to love it. This is going to be a really good episode, uh, you know, something I've, or we've put a lot of thought into recently, um, and, but it is important to us, and we definitely want to talk to uh, you about it, and uh, yeah, let's uh, get right into it. So, we open up our book, and of course, you know, one thing I try to mention is uh, this is basically our beekeeping guide, Keeping Bees with a Smile. It's written by Federer Lazutin and co-written by Dr. Leo Sharashkin. Excellent book on natural beekeeping. And as we keep bees, we follow the guidelines in this book, and we have been successful with these guidelines. And we've loved them so much that, you know, in this book there are central commandments, and we basically want to talk to you about the central commandments and, you know, why we follow those central commandments. So open up our book. Rule three, never feed your bees sugar. Swarm colonies that haven't managed to gather enough resources may be fed with supplemental honey. Don't pull honey for the duration of the, of the honey flow. Surplus honey may be pulled during fall or spring, leaving at least 50 pounds of honey for an average size colony for the winter. Now, holy cow, but Wes, all, lots of beekeepers feed their bees sugar. I mean, that's, that's just a common thing. I mean, what? Why wouldn't you do that? I mean, a lot of people feed sugar nowadays. I mean, that's, you know, a lot of people do that. But, hey, Federal Zutin is telling us in this book that in in reality, or at least if we're natural beekeepers, we want to follow what bees do in the wild. And in bees in the wild, they only eat nectar and honey. And so our bees that we keep, we want them to, of course, have a great diet of nectar, but we also want them to feed on honey, too. So if we're going to feed, we're going to basically feed them honey instead of sugar. So we're going to break down into this, and we're basically going to talk about two different topics. Um, one topic is basically going to be, you know, why we choose to feed honey over sugar, and why Lazutin tells us that honey is a much better way to go than sugar. Um, and then we're also going to talk about, like, how much we feed, like, you know, of course, do we feed, all that stuff. And it's going to be some great topics, so let's break right into it. Okay, so... First and foremost, let's get into why we should probably use honey instead of sugar. Now, Lazutin has a very good quote in the book, in Keeping Bees with a Smile, about, let's see, where is it? Okay, here we go. And in this quote, he talks about his reasoning as to why he thinks we should feed honey instead of sugar. So I want you to pay extra special attention to what I'm about to say, really receive the words, and really just pay close attention and then we're going to dissect what he says after we're done reading through this. As is well known, worker bees feed on nectar or honey by drawing on previous stockpiles. In addition to carbohydrates, nectar contains vitamins and micronutrients, while also honey contains traces of pollen. Unlike these natural products, sugar-based supplements contain nothing but carbohydrates. Therefore, sugar-based food is one of the main reasons for bee diseases, including the widespread varroa mite. Now pay special attention to what I'm about to say right here. One principle common to all living things is that an organism weakened by a shortage of necessary substances is most likely to be targeted by pathogenic microorganisms and parasites, and it is simply impossible to avoid such problems unless bees live on their wholesome natural diet. Now, let's really dissect what Lazutin is saying right there. He's basically telling us that nectar is the best food for bees. Nectar is the way to go. If they have a source of nectar, that's the best food because nectar has the micronutrients, it has the vitamins, it holds all that good stuff. Honey is another good source of food because honey has traces of pollen. So it is a good source of food. Now, then he goes on to say that sugar basically is nothing but carbohydrates. So all you have in sugar is just carbohydrates, and that's it. There's no vitamins, no minerals, no, 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 just carbohydrates. That's it. 
And then he goes on to say that sugar is a, ma is a big cause of bee diseases. And he reinforces that by saying that any organism that does not receive a good supply of nutrients and, all, and vitamins and all that stuff is more prone to disease. And I don't know about you, but that makes a lot of sense to us. And that makes it, you know, we really, we heard that and it, it really dawned on us that, holy cow, like that makes a lot of sense. And so since then, we have just been feeding our bees honey and we're about to talk about how much honey we give but honey has been our main source of food if we're feeding our bees because honey does have traces of pollen in it so it's better than just plain carbohydrates now i understand that honey is probably more expensive than sugar um but we definitely think it's a better alternative uh to sugar um and you know i think your bees will probably do a lot better if you're feeding if you're going to give them honey um, and I have heard some people say, well, honey is bad for bees. You know, you shouldn't give honey to bees um, if it comes from a different hive. But we have never had failures based on the honey we've given to our bees. Our bees have done well um, since we fed them honey. So they've done really good. Okay, so now we're going to talk about the next topic is, which is how, mu how much do we feed our bees? Do we feed our bees? You know, how often do we feed our bees? Because there's lots of different variances in this with beekeepers and how much they feed their bees. Now, I saw a YouTube video recently of a gentleman that was basically talking about um, a conference he went to. And, you know, nothing against this person. Um, he was just talking about a, a beekeeping conference that he went to, and it was a natural beekeeping conference. And the speaker there at the natural beekeeping conference told his listeners basically never feed your honeybees like do not feed your honeybees don't do it you know and a beekeeper basically listened to that went home didn't feed their bees and all their bees died um and the only thing i would say about this is i can't speak for all natural beekeepers because there's different natural beekeepers and there are natural beekeepers that just do not feed at all um however lazutin um in this book basically teaches us um that if we do need to feed that we can give our bees uh, honey, of course, as we talked in the previous uh, segment, um, we can give our bees honey and we can help them out. But you, so I, I would say, you know, we don't, we don't just go, you know, completely without feeding our bees. Like we do feed our bees sometimes. Now, the YouTuber also made a comment. He said that he heard a quote from a farmer basically that basically said, um, you know, I feed my cattle, you know, I don't let my cattle die, so why would why would I let my honeybees die? Like, why wouldn't I feed my honeybees? And I don't think this is a very fair comparison because if you think about cattle, you know, you got goats, horses, cows, and, you know, a hundred different other things. Um, they will feed on grass, grain, hay during the spring, summer, and fall. And then basically in the wintertime, they get put in the stall and the farmer will feed them um, hay and grain or, or grain throughout the winter time. And so if we think about a honeybee, the, the way a honeybee is programmed, the way it, it functions is it collects nectar throughout the year and it will basically turn some of the, it will consume some of the nectar, but it will turn some of this nectar into honey and basically store that honey for the winter time. And then they will survive off their winter stock in the winter time off that honey all honeybees are all honeybees function like this 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 is the way they're supposed to be um so i don't think it's a very fair comparison to say honeybees are like cattle i always feed my cattle so therefore i'll always feed my bees now do we never feed our bees no there's actually two different cases where we'll feed our bees one is if we pull a swarm hive out of a tree and if we see that and we leave them up there for three weeks then we pull them out and if we see they have no honey whatsoever then we will feed them and help them out a little bit. Another case is going into the winter season, if we're pulling honey in the fall, if we see a hive that we're pulling honey from and they just have no honey, then we will give them a stock of honey uh, or a supply of honey going into the winter time. So there are two different cases where we will feed our bees. Um, but I will say there are those beekeepers that would say, well, okay, Wes, but what about January or February when it's freezing outside and they have no food and blah, 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 and, you know, and, and I just got to feed my bees. I got to keep my bees from dying. Well, I would say to you that, you know, 
if you want to feed your bees all the time, if you want to feed them all throughout the season, you're more than welcome to. However, because we're natural beekeepers, you know, we try to replicate how bees live in the wild. And the way bees live in the wild, it's it's not an easy life. The bees will collect honey throughout the spring, summer, and fall, and then they will consume that honey in the winter. And if they don't collect enough, they will die. And that's just how they are. Um, but the bees that survive will swarm and they will reproduce and they will have good genetics. So those bees that actually survive and are used to always getting this, the, the amount of food that they need to survive, they will reproduce and do really well. So we feed, you know, two different cases. We do not feed all throughout the year um, because we don't, want our, we don't want our honeybees to be just totally dependent on us. And some of you might think, well, that maybe that's unfair. Um, however, you know, we're natural beekeepers and we think that, you know, the bees should be able to be independent. You know, the bees should be able to be independent. Now, of course, we do help them with a the hive and stuff like that. That is true. Um, but the truth is we don't want them to be dependent on us feeding them all throughout the year. And basically, if we ever stop feeding them, they cease to exist, you know. Um, we want our bees to be able to do it on their own, and that's just the truth. Um, so, yeah. So, that basically is always the two points we have to make about feeding sugar and feeding honey and then how often we feed. But I want to talk about one more thing before we close this video out, and that's that some of you might watch this video, or a few of you might watch this video, and you might say, okay, Wes doesn't know what he's talking about. I mean, I... I feed sugar, my friend feeds sugar, we feed throughout the year, and that's what we do. And, you know, and, and Wes just, he, he, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So the only thing I'll defend, you know, what our family does is for six years, we followed traditional styles. We bought packages of bees. We fed sugar water all the time. We disturbed our bees all the time. We treated our bees. We did all these things for six years, and guess what? Every single year, our bees died. They died every year. And, you know, it, it's unfortunate because a lot of beekeepers that get into the practices nowadays, um, they will fail. A lot of new beekeepers fail, and that's a true statistic. A lot of new beekeepers come along and they fail. And they blame themselves. That's the worst part. And we blamed ourselves. We basically said we're bad beekeepers. Even though we were listening to all the traditional styles, and we were doing all of the old fashioned ways, you know, we were, we were breaking right into that. So, you know, a lot of beekeepers will blame themselves. And when it came to sugar water, we fed our bees sugar water every year, all year. And, and of course, powdered sugar in the winter time. But, you know, we did a lot of that stuff. Um, and our bees died all the time. Now, do I think the sugar water is the sole reason why they died? No, I don't. We changed a lot of things when we became natural beekeepers, and that's what we're covering in these central commandments. So the truth is, you know, it would be one thing if we were coming at you with these rules and basically saying, you know, you probably shouldn't do this because of this and that. Um, if we had never done the previous uh, traditions, but we have done all those things. We fed our bees sugar water, we've treated, we've used packages, we've disturbed our bees countless times in the year. We've done all those things and other things too. And we failed every single year. And I'm not talking about losing one or two hives. I'm talking about losing it 10 hives at a time every year. So it, it got to, and it basically got to the point where we were losing thousands of dollars every year. And we had to stop. We had to stop because we were losing way too much money. And we just thought we were failures. And it wasn't until we found Dr. Leo Shirashkin's website, HorizontalHive.com, and this wonderful book by Federal Zudin and co-written by Dr. Leo Shirashkin, um, that basically we said, holy cow, like there's a whole different way to do beekeeping and it doesn't have to be difficult. That is the, that's the craziest thing. And one thing, if you do try natural beekeeping, you will find out your life will get a lot easier. And, you know, if we talk about that in terms of feeding, it is true that you're going to work a lot less if you're feeding your, if you're not feeding your bees all throughout the year and you're basically letting them do it on their own, like you will work a lot less. And you'll see in all these central commandments, a lot of the things we do makes our lives easier and makes it a lot more enjoyable. So, you know, we, we feel very strongly about these central commandments. Um, we love uh, what Lazutin has taught us. And we've been, and the difference is now we've been successful and we have succeeded. And so we're gonna keep doing this. And you know, 
if you want to do things your way, you're more than welcome to. I'm not going to go to another YouTube video of a traditional beekeeper and say, your method stinks, you know, I don't like this, downvote, leave a nasty comment. You know, I'm not going to do all that because I do think beekeepers should have the freedom to do, to, tr to handle their bees like they want to handle their bees. Um, and so, you know, yeah, we feel very strongly about that. So we hope you enjoyed this analyzing the natural beekeeping central commandments episode. Until next time, we'll see you soon.